Today I will be talking to you about an unconventional cell for cancer uh, gene and cell therapy, and they're called the olfactory and sheathing glia or the olfactory and sheathing cells. So just before we discuss these cells, I'd like to remind you of the major biological challenges that we face when we treat cancer in general, and brain tumors in particular. So we have a brain tumor in general is an infiltrative disease, where other systemic tumors could be uh, metastatic diseases. They're, in the tumor microenvironment, it's, it's either immunosuppressive and it's very heterogeneous, whether the tumor itself is heterogeneous or whether the tumor microenvironment is also heterogeneous. And we, we always suffer from these cancer stem-like cell population or tumor-initiating cells, whether in a, in a brain tumor they're called glioma stem cell or in, a, in, a, in another type of cancer, cancer stem cell. And in the context of brain, we always face the challenge of the blood-brain barrier or the blood-brain tumor barrier, which really pro pro prohibits from uh, entering more than 99% of any biologics or therapeutics that we typically are tested. So. Uh, uh, typically, we, we focus on glioblastoma and DIPG, uh, pediatric uh, uh, glioma, and in, in both of these cases, all of these uh, apply. <clears throat> so today, I'll, I hope I can convince you that we can, we can actually have one therapy that can target many of these challenges presented here on the slide. So what are these OEG? OEGs, they're fully differentiated cell. This is very important. They're not stem cell. They're actually, uh, they're found in the olfactory mucosa, olfactory bulb. They naturally migrate from peripheral nervous system to central nervous system, and their role is to maintain the olfactory system and axonal extension and neural regeneration. They can easily obtain from the olfactory mucosa tissue, and, uh, and that tissue actually is one of the very few tissues in your body that can self-regenerate, and those are the cells that are responsible for self-regenerating these tissue. Typically, a neurosurgeon goes in there to perform their surgery. They remove these tissue and discard it, and this, is, and, we, and this tissue is actually very precious for us. This is what we actually use. So what's known so far about OEG? They're involved in neurogenesis and myelation, and then this is why they've been used clinically for uh, spinal cord lesion, and they've showed improvement in clinical trials, for, uh, functional improvement. So why we, they were not tested in cancer in, in, uh, before, but why we decided to test them in cancer, because when you look at their properties, like reduction of astrocytes activity, their phagocytosis properties, their immune modulation properties, they can also differentiate neural cells, neural stem cell or progenitor cell, all of these, they actually apply in brain tumor or other types of cancer. So we thought maybe by, by looking at their normal uh, roles in, in, uh, in the brain, we can, we can apply them for, uh, for, for uh, glioma therapy. So the, the challenge in OEG was the isolation and optimization. Even though people have used them, you can obtain them from different area of the olfactory mucosa. So we have a protocol that we optimized in the lab. We can get more than 99% purity of these cells. The first thing we did, when you co-culture these OA with glioma stem cell, you can, we can see easily that they in, prohibit or inhibit uh, glioma stem cell growth, as you see on the slides here. And so we took this further, and when you look over time in glioma stem cell, and this is adult glioma, you see that, and we look uh, into different markers, which I'm not showing here, you see that these OEG, they inhibit cell renewal, <coughs> excuse me, proliferation of glioma stem cell, and they're actually inducing their death. And that doesn't only apply for glioblastoma, it also apply for pediatric glioma like the IPG and many other types of brain tumors that we also test them. <clears throat> so great, you have a therapy that works in culture. What happens when you put them in the brain? And that's more important, or, and when you, and, or you translate it to an in vivo settings. This is a patient-derived xenograft model. The tumor cells are in red. And we decided to actually implant these cells in, into the nasal uh, cavity. And why we did that? Because this is their natural route to the brain normally. So we thought to use their natural route to get to the brain, and maybe that will give us an advantage to also attract and get to brain tumor. And indeed, you see that these OEG in, showing in green, not only they go to the primary bulk of the tumor, the primary tumor mass, but it's most important they track these infiltrative glioma stem cells, which are responsible for tumor growth and, uh, patient, and eventually recurrence and patient death. So when you zoom in more uh, deeper on these, uh, in this model, you see that the, in, a, in the control settings, the tumor becomes part of the brain. But in, in, in a settings where OEG is injected, and I should say this is a single injection of OEG intranasally, you see that the OEG are actually unsheathing 
these glioma stem cells, and you can see that these cells in red, they become rounded, they're shaped, and we actually have data showing that they're also phagocytosin glioma stem cell, these OEG. And you can see the OEGs are in, in green, homing very well to the primary tumor site. So this is all great data, then we thought, okay, clinically, how would that be applicable? So we decided to actually test this model in a very invasive patient-derived xenograft, but only when we make sure that we have a very large size of tumor in the mouse of the brain. So we implant these uh, PDX models in red, and we waited about four to five weeks before we started injecting the OEG. At that point, the tumor was very large size, uh, confirmed by bioluminescence imaging. And we see that in this very aggressive model, 40% of our mice, they became tumor free actually, and they survived more than 150 days. So the, you, and then of course you have an extension of mouse survival. Now, since these cells are targeting uh, glioma stem cell, and one of, the, one of our, uh, our aim is to try to differentiate glioma stem cell, this way we can inhibit their property to form tumors. We thought to test this here to see, do these actually, uh, differentiate glioma stem cell, and actually, indeed, you see that when you co-culture these glioma stem cell in the dish with OEG, and then you implant them in the brain, no tumor is formed whatsoever in any of the mice tested. So this tells us that these OEGs are actually inhibiting not only tumor growth, but they're differentiating this population of cells. Is this only applicable to brain tumor? No, we thought to test this in a lung cancer model, also a very aggressive lung cancer model, only the OEG are injected uh, one shot, and here we decided to do it systemically because we wanted to get to the systemic disease in lung. And you see that we also, in this aggressive model, we have an en enhanced survival, again, with a single injection of OEG. And when you look deeply into the tumor microenvironment, we, uh, and looking at immune cells showing in brown here, you see that what, what's interesting is that OEG are recruiting immune cells to the tumor microenvironment, and they're activating cytotoxic T cells, CD8 positive T cells, CD3 positive T cells. And this is not only uh, shown in lung cancer, we actually just see the same effect in brain tumor model. So the cells on their own, they were great. Can we actually make them better to, to fight the tumor? And uh, indeed, we, we can use them for gene therapy where we can modify them with an AAV vector uh, add an associated viral vector to express a cytotoxic gene, and when these cells home to the tumor, they deliver cytotoxic gene, and at the same time recruiting the immune cells to the tumor site. And since the brain tumor and other types of tumor, they're immune, su immune suppressive due to many immune checkpoint markers like PD-1 or PDL one on the tumor, you can, we can engineer these OX cells to actually secrete on site at the tumor site a single chain antibodies against uh, PD-1 for immune checkpoint blockade. And now we have a much, much more efficient therapeutic uh, uh, with OEG. So what, what are the clinical implications? You can do autologous transplantation of OEG in the nasal cavity that can target brain tumors and induces regression. OEGs activate anti-tumor immunity. It can be engineered with cytotoxic genes or secrete antibody for on-site immune checkpoint blockade. Systemic injections of OEG could actually target lung cancer and potentially other types of cancers. And so what's the next step or the current study? We have an optimized OEG isolation protocol, gene manipulation, and culturing. We have advanced preclinical studies in several animal models for DIPG, glioblastoma, lung cancer. We have a protective technology targeting cancer in a, in, a, in a cell that has already been established clinically to be safe and effective. And because these cells are differentiated, it's important, and I mentioned that before, typically differentiated cells do not, form, do not have a chance to form tumors, like, like, when you, uh, like stem cell, for instance. And we were excited to work with a team of industry pioneers and experts to bring new treatments for cancer patients, especially for brain tumor. Thank you.